Yo, 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 good morning, what up? Grateful for another maggot-free day above the dirt. Jersey Shore checking out. I actually think it's a beautiful day. I love days like this. The, the clouds remind me of a, a cool black and gray tattoo. But anyway, this video is about how Buddhism stinks. That's right, I said it, Buddhism stinks. Um, at least in the very beginning. And uh, this, is, uh, this topic is kind of a free association with a, a long-standing Zen statement that tells practitioners, don't stink of Zen, or you stink of Zen. And what this means is um, well, a little background. Zen, and especially the Cohen process, which is when you meet privately with the master, he gives you a koan or a question, a seemingly unanswerable question or, or uh, an unanswerable riddle. To, and, and the purpose of this is to have kind of an aha, um, eureka-like insight moment where it, it, it separates us from an intellectualizing our life seeing how what's really, how intellectualizing separates us from our real-time present experience. So we don't answer the question with words. Sometimes we will shout or, or, or scream or do something kind of crazy, seemingly crazy. But, um, you know, he doesn't want a didactic presentation of an intellectual answer. He wants you to demonstrate through action that you intrinsically understand the answer and it's coming from a, an organic, authentic, spontaneous response from every fiber of your being. And he wants to, to see that demonstrated um, as an experience of the question, not what we think about it, not an answer that's thought and then just regurgitated, but a spontaneous, organic, authentic response through action. So, um, because we live our life mostly separated from our experience because we're separated by what we add to it, by what we think, a narrative, a past memory, a future fear, um, not fully engaged. So when, some, when it's said that someone stinks of Zen, it's because that's what they're doing. Um, and I'm not saying they're aware of it, and I'm not saying it's conscious, and I'm not being critical because this is a part of the Cohen Zen process to realize that we do this and, and to, to get out of it and not do it. So to stink of Zen, and that's what a Zen master would say when he realized you were being um, intellectual and you weren't authentic, and it wasn't organic, and you had not prepared this kind of generic answer for him, he'd say, stop stinking of Zen, and he'd ring his bell and that was the signal to get the fuck out. Um, so. When you stink of Zen, you're thinking, you're intellectualizing. It's not organic, it's not authentic. Um, if you're sitting stoically in a rigid meditation position for hours, um, it can appear that you're doing well, but you stink of Zen if what you're really doing is daydreaming by getting with the chick on your left or if you're ladies, the dude on your right. Um, if you're thinking about the great book you're gonna write or um, what you're gonna do when meditation's over, and you're errands for the day, the rest of the day, you stink of Zen. So you're a poser. So that's where this kind of topic starts. But for me, there's two aspects where I say Buddhism stinks. And I actually wrote a book called Buddhism Stinks. And the cover's great. It's a Buddha sitting on a toilet. Um, so there's two different types of stinks. One is Buddhism stinks in the beginning because when we start having awakened moments, meaning we start to kind of understand the nature of existence, the Dharma, our place in it, how um, we're conditioned and we're living from this place of habitual reactivity, it stinks because we know too much now. We know too much about ourselves. We know too much about how true, authentic living is, and um, we have to live from this place of wisdom now, 
rather than from ignorance. And we get jealous and resentful that, oh my God, man, I want to go back to sleep. This is too much friggin' work, right? This stinks. So that's the first aspect where we kind of wake up to the nature of existence, our place in it, and our, our own um, conditioned selves and conditioned behavior. And we realize, God, this is going to be a lot of work. The other aspect of Buddhism stinking is now that we're awake and we know we can't go back to sleep, we know we, we can never go back there again, we know too much now, we have to keep going forward um, or suffer tremendously, we actually suffer more from knowing, from waking up than we do from being asleep. Even though being asleep is complete suffering, it is an extreme suffering when we realize how asleep we were, how much we missed, how much opportunity you know we, we let pass by and how much we harmed our own lives so the second aspect of Buddhism stinking is while we're awake most of the world is still asleep just living in ignorance walking around in a robotic mindless state doing a lot of unhealthy stuff that creates even more work for us right it's bad enough we got to deal with our own shit. Now we got to deal with all the shit being created around us by people that are still, um, in our na uh, naive, naive perspective, they're in bliss, the ignorance, uh, the bliss of their ignorance, going through life happy as a clam. And we know that's not the case, but it feels that way because we're not only doing all this work on ourselves, but now we're doing extra work caused by these people that are not woke yet. And we get pissed. But the good, th the good thing is it's a natural part of the process. And in the long run, we see that what we thought was uh, blissful ignorance was actually extreme suffering. And that once we kind of can go through this process and start coming closer to the uh, light at the other end of that tunnel, we see that even though it sucks going through it, and it does stink going through it, it's well worth it because we get to a place where we're authentic, we're living in a real-time, present-moment experience, we're not attached, we're not pursuing and avoiding, and we're not turning life into suffering, we're turning it into joy, satisfaction, um, fulfillment, um, and... Uh, Instead of wishing we could go back to that ignorant place where we're just kind of mindlessly roboting it, zombieing, living life like a, a, a zombie, you know, um, we're living the richest, most fulfilled, empowered existence um, that was beyond our wildest dreams. So, Buddhism does stink. Um, we just learned to deal with the smell. <laughs> Peace out. Have a great maggot-free day above the dirt.